In this section, we're going to look at polynomials. So what you will already have met is the concept of a linear function and a quadratic function. And you should be able to identify that a linear function involves a singular value of x. So you might have something like um, 2x plus 5. Okay? And we would refer to that as linear. Now, quadratic, um, we know that that means that there's going to be an x squared involved. So it might look like 3x squared. So we'll put y equals. So y equals 3x squared uh, plus 5x minus 2, for example. And we know that we can identify that as quadratic. Okay? Because we look at the highest power of x, in this case 2, go, right, it's got an x squared in it, so it must be quadratic. The next stage up, because we've got here a power of x to the 1, and here we've got an x squared, it makes sense then the next one would have an x to the 3 in it, a cubed. So um, we don't necessarily have to write it in this specific order. We might have um, 5 take away x cubed plus 2x squared, for example. Now, as you can see, there's an x cubed in there. There's also an x squared, but the fact that there's an x squared doesn't make it a quadratic. You're always looking for the highest power, okay, of uh, the highest power of x that you can see. And that will be cubed, 3. And that will make it a cubic. Okay, so we have a linear a linear function here, a quadratic function, a cubic. Okay. Notice also that there's no linear term, as I might refer to it. There's no like 2x or 5x. There's no like singular x by itself. There's just an x cubed, an x squared, and this constant term here. Okay. So we could actually go backwards. We might have something that has no x's in it at all. So we could have y is equal to 3. And we would refer to that as constant. Okay, So we've got these four stages now. Now, what would be the next one up? Well, it makes sense that we've got x. There's no x's here. It's like having x to the 0. We've got x to the 1, and x squared, then an x cubed. So it makes sense we'd have x to the 4. So y is equal to 3x to the 4 take away 7x plus 1, OK? The largest power of x here is 4, and this is a quartic, OK? Q-U-A-R-T-I-C, quartic, OK? And then you can keep going. Um, you can then have a quintic, um, so with an x to the power of 5. Then you could have an equation with x to the power of 6, or 7, or, or 100, OK? And what we're referring to is the, and we're looking for, is that largest power of x. So that is what we refer to as the degree or the order of the polynomial. So we refer to the order or degree of the polynomial. So here, for example, it is 4. This is an equation of degree 4, or a polynomial of degree 4, or order 4. Here it was 3, so the largest power of x. Here the order is 2. Here it would be 1, and here it would be 0. So if I wrote down an equation that looked like this, so y is equal to 3x to the 7 minus 9x squared, plus 15 take away 4x to the 57, for example. Here is a polynomial that is of order 57, or degree 57, because you're always looking for the largest power of x in this case. Okay. Now, uh, we don't call polynomials uh, ones that have fractional or negative powers. So... We must have just whole number powers of x in these cases. So that's how we can identify the order or the degree of a polynomial. And it's not 
an essential skill that is going to be tested in the exam, but it, it, we can use it to move forward because some exam questions will talk about having linear terms or quadratic terms or cubic terms, and we need to know what they really mean.